CMA part two, section C, asset type number four. Here we go. Buckeye Grain, a corn and wheat processing company, has decided to introduce a new product that can be manufactured by either a capital intensive method, utilization of machinery, or a labor intensive method. Right? The method chosen will have no effect on the quality of the finished product. That's an important assumption. Whether you use machine or labor, the quality is the same. Estimated cost for the two methods are as follows. Direct material for both methods, labor, variable overheads, and fixed overheads. As you can see in capital intensivity, the fixed cost is higher. Under labor intensity, the fixed cost is lower. Of course, that's what you would have expected. Bakai Grain sells the new product for $60 per unit, irrespective of which production method it utilizes. During its initial stage of product life cycle, the incremental selling expenses are estimated to be $1 million annually, plus $4 for each unit sold. All right. Regardless of the manufacturing method, whichever manufacturing method you use, your selling expenses would be the same under both methods. This $4 is same under both methods. Fixed costs are all directly traceable incremental cost, which means all the fixed cost must be considered. They are related to this, these two products or these two methods. So when deciding which manufacturing method to use, the company management team take into account the operating leverage right first question calculate the estimated break-even point in annual unit sales of the new product if the company uses the capital intensive and labor intensive manufacturing method respectively show your calculation i do not do not endorse this column or method you can use any method you want totally up to you as long as your information you are providing makes sense so let's do let's see how we do it you can do it in a paragraphic form. How do we calculate the break-even point? We know the formula. Break-even quantity is equal to fixed cost divided by unit contribution margin. That's what we need under both systems. This is our selling price, $60. From this, we need to deduct our material, labor, variable overhead in this $4. Don't forget this. Same case, $60. Selling price is the same, but cost composition is different this 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 and this so our unit contribution margin can be calculated 60 less 10 less 12 less 6 less 4 gives you 28 dollars so this is the unit contribution margin in case of capital intensive production system 60 less 11.20 less 14.4 less 9.6 less 4 gives you 20.8 okay so this is your unit contribution margin next step is to calculate your break-even quantity. How do we do that? For break-even quantity, this is your 4.88 million plus 1 million. Don't forget this 1 million. Divided with this 28. 4.88 million plus 1 million divided by 28. It gives you a very nice number, 210. That's an indication that your computation is correct. Okay, what about the next one? 2.64 million plus 1 million because 1 million incremental sales cost would be the same under both methods. Fixed cost divided by the unit contribution margin 2.64 plus 1 million divided by 20.8 gives you again a very nice number. <coughs> one seventy five. That's all. You want to give it in a paragraphic form? Go for it. 210, 175 and reasonable computation are sufficient to convince the examiner that you've done the right job. Here we go. Whichever method you want, that's the result. 210, 175, this nicety, if you can afford to, if you can manage within the time, fine. But I recommend whichever method you use should take less time. Paragraphic form is recommended because it takes much lesser time. All of this computation can be shown paragraphically in a, in a horizontal way. I've told you and I've shown you how to do it. Right, done. First part is done. Second question. It says calculate the annual unit sales volume. It's a very important question. Calculate the annual unit sales volume at which the company would be indifferent between the two manufacturing methods. Show your computations. Going back. This is the data for you. 
we want to calculate that level of output for which whether we take this method or this method we are equal we are indifferent whether we go for capital intensive or labor intensive what that level of output be first of all let us see what does it cost to make under capital intensive material labor variable overheads and this four dollar that is 10 plus 12 plus 6 plus 4 the total cost of manufacturing each unit is 32 dollar under capital intensive 11.2 14.4 9.6 and 4 39.2 in case of in case of labor intensive right fixed cost in this case if we add 1 million to it total cost will be 2.64 million 2.64 million plus 1 million would be simply 3.64 million and total cost in case of capital intensive will be 4.8 plus 1 is 5.88 million gentlemen ladies it's a special question of indifferent point what should be the level of output at which whether I take capital intensive or labor intensive method my cost would be the same that's the point right I want my cost to be the same what that level of output be so let's consider that output to be Q that output to be Q if I use the capital intensive method what my cost be my cost would be 32 Q representing the variable cost plus 5.88 million I want this cost to be equal to the cost incurred under the labor intensive method. In this case, the cost is 39.2 Q plus 3.64 million. Cost under both the methods are the same. That's what I'm interested in, right? Cost 32 Q plus 5.88 million. This is the cost of producing Q units under capital intensive method. 39.2 Q plus 3.64 Q. That's the cost under labor intensive method. Making Q the subject of this equation. I'm going to simply write down the net result 39.2 less 32 Q is 7.2 Q to this side is equal to 5.88 million less 3.64 million gives you 2.24 million right 2.24 million so making Q the subject and divided by 7.2 what you get is 311111 this is the level of output at which if you put Q here if you put Q here this is a very I'm going to draw a very 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 important conclusion and I want you people to pay full attention this is the level of output at which the cost incurred under capital intensive method and under labor intensive method would be the same you can try it your way put 311111 on the right side or on the left side the cost would be the same this is the point where the, the decision maker is indifferent whether he goes for the capital intensive production method or the labor intensive production method because the cost would be the same and the question is done but we need to go beyond the question we need to make sense out of it what exactly does it mean at this level of output the cost is same so I am indifferent whether I use capital intensive or labor intensive now let's say if my output goes beyond 311 what if my out output is expected to be more than 311 1111 what would that be in that case if your output is expected to be more than 311111 in this case look at this unit cost rises by 32 dollars each in this case this method is beneficial for me because if you put 311111 higher than this under this method the cost would go up by a higher percentage so if your output is expected to be more than 311111 then go for capital intensive because each extra unit will cost you 32 but if you expect your output to be less than 311 111 then this in this case since your fixed cost is low you should go for labor intensive so the same idea you can apply in the real world large scale business operations they are capital intensive why because it will cost them less to produce every extra unit $32 extra unit right and this ex this cost saving here can be compensated for the larger fixed cost but in case of labor intensive 
even unit cost is higher but lower level of production can be compensated for this lower fixed cost so the point to remember larger organization with capital intensive it is easier and cheaper for them to produce larger output because their unit cost is low at higher level of output but for labor intensive their only advantage is that they have low fixed cost that's why their overall cost is less at the lower level so if output is expected to be more go capital intensive if your output is expected to be less than this go for labor intensivity that's the conclusion you must remember right so that was the point he didn't just ask for the detailed discussion that we have done but that's our final answer next question explain how the level of sales can affect the company's choice of manufacturing method i think he has asked if sales is expected to be more than this capital intensity is recommended if less than this labor intensive we have discussed the reasons in detail next question was identify the four stages of product life cycle these are the four stages just identify please do not overdo do not start describing them he has just asked you to identify he didn't say identify and explain these are the action verbs pay special attention to action verbs what is needed just do that not more not less right so identify the four stages you don't need to draw this colorful product life cycle you of course you can't you just need to tell these are the four stages introduction growth maturity decline right i'm sure you would have read the theory this is the introduction stage growth decline maturity and decline you just need to identify and list them down and that's all he has given just an additional line the time span between initial concept of the product or service and the final time when it is taken out of the market is called the product life cycle these are the four stages and that's enough next identify the pricing strategies that the company might use when the new product is in the second stage of product life cycle if you are at this point right here at growth stage what you will do since you are at the growth stage competitors might release the same product at a lower price or maybe they offer a better quality product so this could require more marketing at this point more marketing and you may have to offer discounts you may lower price at this price so as in order to increase your sales so in this case company might adopt competitive market pricing because you need to keep your price close to what the competitors are charging this much is enough to cover the answer what is required in question number 5 going on to question number 6 explain operating leverage and its relationship with the business risk i'm sure you would have read your theory cma part 2 section b corporate finance it has been discussed there leverage issues has been discussed over there uh, what is operating leverage operating leverage is the measure of how much cost in the operations are fixed rent insurance property taxes fixed salaries of executive management greater the fixed cost greater would be the operating leverage greater the proportion of fixed cost greater would be the operating leverage what is leverage leverage is the power of the company to, to generate returns there are two types of leverages operating leverage and financial leverage operating leverage stems from the fact that fixed costs are a larger proportion of your operations if a company has a, a major part of its cost as fixed we say this company has a high operating leverage if company has less fixed cost we say it has less operating fixed uh, operating leverage a company with larger fixed cost means it has a larger capacity larger uh, management team bigger operations larger space it can generate more returns whereas a company which has less fixed cost it means it will be smaller in size so remember the companies that have larger fixed cost are normally bigger organization with higher potential to earn a leverage means ability to generate returns more fixed cost means you have more power to generate more returns at the same time it could backfire a larger business which has more fixed cost can find itself in a very serious trouble right now many big companies like airbus boeing even uh, general motors many big firms with very high operating leverage because of business downturn they are in very difficult situation they are laying off staff 
so operating leverage is a measure of risk larger the fixed cost as a proportion of total cost higher is the operating leverage higher is the risk so basically if a company has a higher fixed cost swing in business activity can put in a very serious trouble leverage is good as long as you're doing well you're generating returns leverage is good but it could be a nightmare for you like in current circumstances when you have to cover your fixed cost but revenue has fallen drastically that's the point greater the operating leverage and the resultant variability in operating income the greater is the degree of business risk you can higher the risk higher is the return if you have higher great operating leverage you will make more return but if the business downturns you will be out of business leverage is good as long as the market is doing good you make a lot of money yes that's the benefit of leverage but when the market swings downward you are in a very serious trouble right so that's the point management has to decide to what extent they are ready to take on your operating leverage so that completes your asset type number 4